In the last video, we were looking at that example where we compared seat assignment to scores on a test. We saw that the slope was negative 1.1171, which meant if a student moved back one row, their score fell by a little over a point. So what do you think the true slope was? That was the slope from a sample of 30 AP students. What's the actual slope of the least squares regression line? Do you think we could say with 95% confidence what the true slope is of the regression line? I bet we could. So what we're going to be doing in this video is confidence intervals for slope. Um, you can actually do a confidence interval for any part of the least squares regression line. You could do it for y-intercept, but the y-intercept is usually less interesting because it doesn't make sense in real life. Like this example makes no sense. There is no zero row, so there is no real y-intercept in real life. Before we get to the confidence interval, let's just go over the kind of symbols that we're going to be using because um, we haven't used them yet. Well, we've used some of them, but we haven't used all of them. Okay, so for our population, we're going to use the Greek letter beta, which is capital B, it's like a cursive B, to represent the true slope of the population regression line. And then we're going to use lowercase b to represent the slope of the sample regression line. This should be familiar. <laughs> when we deal with means, the Greek letter is the population and the lowercase letter is the sample. Same thing with standard deviations. The same thing applies here beta for population, b for sample. So using that same logic, um, we would actually use alpha for the true y-intercept of the population regression line. Never mind that alpha is already being used as a significance level. I did not make the rules. And then lowercase a is used for these... Hold on. My bad. Uh, lowercase a is used as the y-intercept from the um, sample regression line. And then finally, we'll use sigma as the standard deviation of y from the entire population. So in this case, y is the scores. So we look at all the scores together, we can see the standard deviation of those scores. And then s will be the standard deviation of y from the sample. Okay, now as I mentioned, we're going to be dealing with slope. Could we estimate the true slope of the regression line with 95% confidence? That's the goal. We're still going to use the state plan to conclude process. Yes. It's going to be great. Um, the plan step is a little bit different this time because scatter plots are very different than when you're just looking at like a single dot plot or histogram. Um, I'm going to use the acronym that my textbook uses because I think it's hilarious. It could have been something really cool and instead it's kind of dumb. So first condition is linear. You have to check to see that the relationship between x and y is linear. Now in the last video we kind of said that it wasn't. <laughs> Just, uh, it's close enough for this example. We're going to go with it. But to see if the relationship is linear, what you want to do is check the scatter plot. So look for a rough linear pattern. It's, it's very rough <laughs> in this example, but we're going to say, sure, it's linear-ish. Second condition is independent. Um, that just means all the observations have to be independent of each other. And for that, you're going to look at how the data was collected. So you don't have to use the 10% rule if you can verify that each person did not affect the others. In this case, it's possible that one person's test score could be affected by who they're sitting next to. So it's probably reasonable to say that the test scores aren't independent of each other. But we could use the 10% rule and say there's more than 300 students. So this condition isn't really different than usual. The next condition is normal. For any fixed x, y has to vary normally. So pick any x value, any, any row of the seven rows. y has to vary normally for that particular x value. So for this one, what you want to do is check the residuals. If we look at the residuals and we see that they are roughly normal, then we know that y is varying normally. So you can see on the right here, here are the residuals. Instead of being in a residual plot like they are here, um, what we have is just a histogram of the residuals. So you want to look for a histogram or a dot plot, or a box plot, stem and leaf plot. Somehow you need to be able to check that the residuals are roughly normal. And here, yeah, they're mostly normal. The next one's kind of weird. It's called equal variances. For this, the standard deviation of y has to be the same, or close to the same, for all of the x's. So what you're going to look for here is the residual plot. You want to see roughly the same spread. Now the standard deviation isn't going to be exactly the same for all the x's, but you want close. So when you look at the residual plot, 
yeah, there's a couple that are far away, but there's a couple that are far away on the bottom too. We can say that mostly the spread is the same. There's a couple that are really close, a couple far away, but there's no clear pattern. We can say that mostly the spread is the same. And last but not least, random. Either got to be a random sample or a randomized experiment. And here it wasn't a random sample because it was just the teacher's class, but he did randomly assign them to seats. So still counts. If you were following along, that acronym we just made was LINER. Yeah, liner. Don't like put the word and in here to make it linear. That would make way too much sense. Just make it liner. So that's the plan step. It's a little intense. <laughs> All right, uh, what I want you to do is take out your formula sheet and find the section of your formula sheet that says sampling distributions for simple linear regression. This is the last section of our second page of the formula sheet. So on the left, you can see the random variable we're dealing with is b, lowercase b, that's the slope from our sample. If we're thinking about the sampling distribution of the slope, so we take a random sample of 30 students over and over and over. Each time we find the slope of the scatter plot that we create, the mean of all of those slopes is beta, the true slope from the whole population. And then this is the fun equation for the standard deviation of the slope. And over here is the fun equation for the standard error of the slope. So this s on top of the fraction, that's the standard deviation of the residuals. And then sx is the standard deviation of the x variable. Um, you're probably not going to use this very often. The standard error of the slope is actually in the mini tab output, and I can show you that right now. If you flip back to the notes from yesterday's video, se coefficient, standard error. So for our slope, which was this number here, this is our standard error of the slope. Ta-da! Um, I would say very rarely will you have to do it by hand, but you do have the formula in case you need it. Okay, let's get to the actual confidence interval. When you're calculating an interval for the slope, your statistic is lowercase b. We're going to do a t distribution. Always use a t distribution when you're doing inference for slope. And then the standard error of the slope. Um, one thing to note is that the degree of freedom here is going to be n minus 2 instead of n minus 1. Um, I'm going to make a whole other video that explains degree of freedom. Um, the very minimum that you need to know is that you use n minus 2 when dealing with slope. Okay, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on state plan do conclude because my goodness, we have done it so much. <laughs> For the state step, you're basically just repeating what you want to find. We want to estimate the true slope of the population least squares regression line that predicts the score based on row. I probably should have said 95% confidence there, but I didn't. My bad. Normally you would write out all five parts of liner. Um, we just did that on the page before. For the do step, we start out by finding the critical value. In this case, it's t star. 95% um, of the data in the middle of the distribution leaves 0.025 in each tail, so I'm going to use that as the area, degree of freedom, n minus 2. I think I forgot to put it on this page, but there were 30 students. And then everything after that is very straightforward. I got the slope and the standard error of the slope, both from the mini tab output, 2.048 from right there, plugging it all in. And for conclude, we are 95% confident that the true slope of the population least squares regression line is between negative 3.057 and 0.8228, where x is the row and y is the score. So I've included context there at the end. Even though I said it in state, say it again. So what's interesting about this is that zero actually is in that interval. They didn't ask about this, but we can see that zero is in the interval, so it is possible to get zero for the slope, which would just be a straight horizontal line. So it is possible that there's like no relationship between the two variables. So most of this is a review. The biggest differences are obviously the plan step is super different than anything we've done before. Um, calculating t star involves n minus 2, and then the other different thing is reading the mini tab output. So those are the parts that you might want to review uh, before going on.